Every time I do something like this, there's always going to be a contingent of people who are disappointed with what I say. But <laughs> the show must go on. It is no secret, hush hush, to anyone that Tremaine Emery has left Supreme by this point, after only a year and a half with the streetwear giant. But when he was hired, it was heralded as a new era for Supreme and met with some serious fanfare. But fanfare? Fanfare. But now, here we are. What's up everybody, I'm Reggie Casual and welcome to Worth The Hype. Hopefully I did that right this time, who knows. Anyway, Worth The Hype is where we take the good, the bad, and the ugly of past, present, and future fashion trends, releases, brands, and designers, put them through the test of time, and ask the question, is it worth the hype? And today we take a microscope to the short-lived era of Supreme under Tremaine Emery. Should be fun, let's get it. First, the breakdown. Tremaine Emery, the mastermind behind Denim Tears, a brand he calls African-American sportswear, made a name for himself by using the, as he calls it, cultural vein of fashion as a medium to explore American politics and the black experience. But even before his creative director appointment at Supreme in 2022, Emery was paving the way for his future success. From former J. Crew employee to Marc Jacobs and Stussy, where he eventually became the art director at large. However, the real magic happened when he made the move to London in 2010. There, he and his creative partner, Ade Adulami, forgive me if I didn't say that right, founded No Vacancy Inn, a multidisciplinary creative hub covering fashion, art, music, and nightlife. He then went on to create and consult for several brands and notable individuals such as Ye, Frank Ocean, and the late Virgil Abloh. He also joined forces with brands like Levi's and Ugg. As for his appointment at Supreme, it was met with some trepidation, as this would be the first time Supreme would allow anyone other than James Jebbia himself to steer the creative ship of Supreme. But due to Emery's established credibility and cachet, the risk seemed worth it. However, as we all know, things didn't turn out exactly how the big wigs at VF Corp and Supreme imagined it would go. And that is very big understatement. The good. Emery's design direction seemed to fit with the go back to our roots theme Supreme was going for post pandemic, i.e. a return to the subculture of underground skate and gritty NY street aesthetic. They wanted to pull on people's heartstrings or whatever. And Emery's penchant for raw direct messaging was a clear indication that Supreme was willing to forego the flashy pass it had built for itself before it was bought by VF Corp for over $2 billion. Emery's denim tears was already a success and his design chops were unapologetically raw and without the fashion school technicality that Supreme was toying with just a few seasons prior. And even though Emery's only finished collections with Supreme were spring, summer 2023 and fall, winter 2023, the looks weren't half-baked. In fact, it could be said that Supreme's soft rebrand was headed in the right direction. A Kurt Cobain and Black Means collab waiting in the wings certainly had some feelers. They, they, yeah, they put a stamp on that return to form. But things weren't that good below the surface. And this is where we get to the bad. Quite frankly, Supreme has been declining rapidly. Sure, it still makes money for all you Supreme fans out there, but not nearly what VF Corp had hoped. In fact, revenues are down 7%, and Emery, for all his street cred, was not going to right the ship with two seasons. So the designer was put in an impossible situation that would predictably stifle his ability to negotiate his ideas, which can be a bit, let's say, direct and would rear its head very soon. And let's not forget that while Emery was the first official creative director of Supreme, James Jebbia still to this day has the keys to the castle. He determines what's released, which is weird, and what stays in the pocket, which is not so weird. So while Emery had a creative say in how Supreme was designed and how it looked, it ultimately was up to the higher ups if things were to actually hit the floor. And this came to a major head once Tremaine Emery, perhaps wanting to use Supreme to further his radical approach to design and give voice to his aesthetic direction by releasing a collaboration with black American artist Arthur Jaffa that depicted a lynched black man and another with a whipped backside on pieces of apparel, like t-shirts and hoodies. This left Supreme to ultimately, and perhaps predictably, shut down the collaboration, but not really. And this is where it gets ugly. In an interview, Tremaine Emery confirmed that he resigned from Supreme due to a controversy surrounding the removal of images from the collaboration with artist Arthur Jaffa. Emery was not informed about the removal, and this incident was the breaking point that led to his departure. 
He repeatedly pointed to systemic racism within the company, like Supreme, as the reason behind this decision. Emery also revealed that the controversial imagery was removed following email from a black employee of Supreme or VF Corp. <laughs> Crazy, right? And they were expressing concern about the violent visuals in a commercial fashion collection, and they thought it shouldn't even release at all. This prompted Emery to bring up the issue in a meeting, questioning the brand's commitment to diversity, which is weird because if Supreme responded to a black employee's email about the release, then they do have a commitment to diversity in a weird way. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, Emery felt that there should have been a conversation about the controversial images rather than a unilateral decision and he described this position at Supreme as making him feel like a mascot, which is bad. Supreme disagreed with Emery's characterization of the company and the handling of the Arthur Jaffa project, which they stated had not been canceled. It's still on, just not those images. It's certainly a lot to pack, but in simple terms, it seems Emery wanted to go the distance with his message. Supreme was unwilling to go that far, but also made the decision without telling him that they were shutting some pieces down. So to that end, Tremaine had a point, yeah, like they didn't tell him. And Supreme certainly had a point as well because you know, they can't release that. But who wins out in the end is really what everyone wants to know, right? Or at least the reason why you're watching this is to see what I'm gonna say about it. So was it worth the hype? Well, Supreme and Tremaine Emery, yeah, for, no, no, of course it wasn't worth the hype because we barely got anything to show for the move. It seemed to be on the way, but we'll never know. However, was the controversy worth the hype? That's another question. At the core of Emery's departure from Supreme lies another crucial question. Do images of black pain and violence belong in fashion? In Emery's further comments, he highlighted the significance of representation and validation, especially for people of color, and his own desire to inspire individuals from diverse backgrounds but many simply didn't agree with his method, especially when we're talking about this release, even other black people. Shamira Ibrahim stated that Tremaine needs to seriously evaluate what radicalism or aesthetic appeal he thought would be found in clothing depicting black people being hung and whipped, adding, who the hell was supposed to wear that? And that's really at the heart of the issue. Who was this for? As a person who's trained in marketing like me, right, and creative direction, I find myself puzzled by this very question. Like, was this collection for the black teenager who wants to make people feel uncomfortable and make a point? Or maybe it was for Supreme's largely white male teenage market that still wears Supreme. Or perhaps the Japanese and Chinese market that resells Supreme in droves. Like who? Like, that? I'm being facetious, of course. With more and more mainstream fashion fans drifting towards brands like Fear of God and I'm Leon Door, Supreme simply is not at liberty to take any risks that can jeopardize an already tense financial situation. Now, there will be sides in this debate. Of that, I am clear, and there already is. But this isn't simply a racism issue or a systemic racism issue. It's a business one and how a business chooses to operate versus how they hire and how who they hire should reflect how they operate. And it's clear just from this situation that Supreme and Emery made the wrong decision in working together. One wants to maintain the status quo, the other wants to get a message out there. And sometimes those two, th actually most of the time, those two things do not mix. But that is the casual take. Right? Like, did he choose a side? I, I guess my side would be they shouldn't have worked together in the first place. But the question is, what do you think? <laughs> was the Emory Supreme Partnership worth the hype? Or rather, was the fallout worth the hype and attention? Whose position do you favor in the debate? Or give us another topic you'd like to see on worth the hype if this does not interest you at all. Whatever the case may be, let it all be known in the comments. And at the very least, drop a like and tap the notification bell to stay up on the latest and every other video coming out from the casual. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute. Take that. See what happens. I already know. There's some angry people out there. Just calm down. Calm down. <laughs>